Good morning, it's Friday. We continue with 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Therefore, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Paul is giving instructions here and he says, I want the men in every place to pray, lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Now, some people have interpreted this passage to mean that every time we pray, we need to lift our hands and in some denominations this is very popular and others is frowned upon. I really don't think it matters. I think the act of lifting up your hands is an act of surrender and you can do that physically. You can lift your hands and praise and worship. I personally like to do that. Some people don't but we can lift our hands also in our hearts. We don't need to physically raise our hands. God is more interested in what's in our heart than in our physical posture. But the thought here of raising our hands is that we surrender to God. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. That's the, the idea here. And that we pray without wrath and without dissension. That we pray um, having reconciled with our neighbors if that's necessary. Remember Jesus said if you come to offer a sacrifice and you remember there's something, your neighbor has something against you or you have something against your neighbor, go and be reconciled first and then bring your offering. If you are you know, not reconciled with your brother, get that sorted first and then come. That's the idea here. We are to pray always. Uh, Paul is encouraging us to pray. Do we need to be praying about everything and all things giving thanks to God. When we pray, we are surrendering. We are lifting up our hands, our hearts, we are surrendering to God. We are saying that we want His will to be done. We want His kingdom to become. We are saying that we realize that on our own we can do nothing, that we are fully and totally dependent upon Him. And when we pray, we are seeking His guidance. We're seeking His wisdom. We are thanking Him for everything that He has given to us. When we pray, we are building and maintaining that relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that's why we need to pray always without ceasing. That's why we need to be praying everywhere. We need to be teaching our children to pray. We need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and lean not upon our own understanding, but in all ways to acknowledge him. And then he will make our paths smooth. So these instructions are very, very important. These reminders are important. We pray. Uh, we pray. God already knows what we need, but we pray because that tells us that we know that we need God to provide for our needs. So prayer is very much uh, for us. It's very much there to and it has powers that we cannot even uh, begin to imagine the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much the bible says so um, let's pray always uh, in surrender knowing that god is in full control lord god heavenly father we do lift our hearts and our hands before you today in the precious name of jesus your son and our lord as we come into this prayer lord we come with thanksgiving in our hearts we thank you for your tremendous love. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your sufferings upon the cross. We know that without the cross, we would not be able to come to you. We would not be able to come near to the Father. It's only because you, Lord Jesus, shed your precious blood for us, paid our sin debt in full, that we can come and we can lift up holy hands, hands that have been forgiven, hands that have been made clean by your holy, precious blood. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, thank you. And a thousand times we say thank you. As your word directs us, Lord, we pray for our country. We pray for our leaders. We pray for our government. We pray, Lord, that you give them wisdom and understanding. In these times when there are many uh, vital talks and meetings going on, Lord, we pray that they would be especially vigilant and understanding and have discernment. Lord God, we pray for those who are suffering and the tyranny in other countries and are being persecuted. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on the Ukraine, the loss, the death, the ravaging, the despair. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy also in the same way on Israel and Palestine. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray, Lord, for your kingdom to come. We look forward to your return, Lord Jesus, when all of these things will have passed away. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. Till that time, Lord, may we be instruments of your peace. Help us to sow love and peace wherever we go. Help us to be reconciled with those who uh, we have somehow come apart from. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we commit all to you. 
we thank you once again. We lift up before you the sick, the dying, the poor, the needy, the homeless and the helpless. As we think of the sick, we also thank you for those who care for the sick and tend to their needs. Lord, strengthen them and help them. We pray for the lost souls that do not know you. We ask, Lord, that many would turn to you today. We thank you, Lord, that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. But as far as the heavens are high above the earth, so are your thoughts and your ways above our thoughts and ways. And we realize that your ways and your thoughts are always the best. So we submit to them. And so we do, Lord, a surrender all to you. And ask now that you would take us by the hand, lead and guide us. And listen to us as we bring before you our prayers with the prayer that you yourself have given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you all again tomorrow.